Okay, so at this point in Mulholland Drive, um, we return to Rita um, and Betty, and they, you know, where they, and we had, we almost have the beginning of a story, which is that Rita has amnesia. Where did she come from? That's the story, I guess. Although very confusing, how this would involve any of the other characters who seem off on their own movies, um, but it's sort of the beginning of a movie. So, um, right, and, and in details, they, they the zipper is way too loud and slow and dramatic there. Um, when they open the bag full of money and they have a bag full of cash, right? And maybe the cash makes me think of the mafia and maybe there's some kind of connection here. It's hard to know. Um, um, and then, but, but we see, we almost have a plot building, right? Because then we jump to the guys who are looking for a girl on the street who may be bruised. Um, and it seems like they're looking for Laura Herring. So we almost have a movie. Um, where the hitman guy and our look is looking for Laura Herring. She has amnesia. Who is she? Betty's going to help her. I don't know how these other characters get involved in it, but that's almost a movie. Um, and there's a blue key. So there's a whole other level of mystery. Where a key, as soon as you see a key, you're like, what is it open? Um, and this is like a weird looking key. Um, notice, by the way, though, that the guy's investigating Laura Herring's disappearance. They're talking to uh, sex workers in the street. Notice that, again, in terms of weird details, the sex worker has like very erect nipples that are distracting in a way that you normally wouldn't put in a movie. But notice also that the sex worker they're asking looks a little bit like Betty. Not a lot like Betty. There's not a secret twist to this coming, right? It is Betty. I just I just want you to notice that she looks a little bit like Betty. Um, we talked uh, when doing Sunset Boulevard about the way Hollywood sort of eats women and spits them out again and treats them like trash. And I mentioned the the, the Black Dahlia killer um, and those girls on the casting couch and poor Norma Desmond, and right? Um, but like, you know, when you see a lot of sex workers in LA are often young women who wanted to be actresses and couldn't find a place in the movies and ended up turning to sex work for sustenance. So, it's and in the fact that they look a little bit like Betty, um, who's come to Hollywood to be an actress, beautiful young girl, um, it, it, it suggests a possible path that Betty's in danger, right? That, that this Hollywood dream of hers has there's a dark side to it, um, and I think it's important that 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 sex worker looks a little bit like um, Naomi Watts, um, because again, that's what Hollywood does: it sort of eats women and spits them out. Um, Okay, uh, and, and and by the way, I love the detail that the sex worker has like bruises on her arm in the shape of fingers, right? That she, someone has grabbed her so hard that she has like four bruise marks across the arm that are exactly sort of finger shaped. Um, just very disturbing. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's really showing you the dark side of Hollywood. Um, and, and Betty is excited. Um, uh, she wants to pretend to be someone else. They're gonna, she's gonna get on the payphone and pretend to be someone else when they call the police. And it's an amazing scene where she, I love the part where she winks. She like bites her lip when she's talking on the payphone, and then she and she winks and she says, uh, you know, she's calling about a, and she gives a big wink, an accident on Mulholland Drive, and and she hangs up the phone. She get no new information. The police are just like, yeah, there was an accident, and she quickly hangs up the phone, even though it's a payphone. How is she gonna get caught? Um, but she hangs up the phone quickly, and she's so proud of herself because she is an actress and she used acting to get information. It's so goofy. Like she didn't do anything. Like you don't, you don't, you don't need acting. You can just call the police station and ask, and she wouldn't have any more information than they already had. It's silly. Um, but she's adorable and we like her and she's cute. And, uh, you know, that, that scene where she's on the phone is just, I think it's one of the cutest things I've ever seen in any movie. She's so excited to be on the phone, uh, solving a mystery. Um, but she's like, like, like Kyle McLaughlin I mentioned in Blue Velvet is like Hardy Boys, which is these sort of detective novels from the 1950s. There was a female version of that, uh, Nancy Drew. Uh, and Naomi Watts is a little bit like Nancy Drew, gonna solve a mystery, fresh faced young girl, gonna solve a mystery. Um, okay, cool. Um, then we're back to the director. And once again, all my expectations, things are reversed. Nothing's what I think it's going to be. So he goes home and he catches his wife having an affair. Um, but interestingly, instead of being mad at the wife, the wife is mad at him for catching her. Um, and the guy she's sleeping with is like, who, by the way, is, is Miley Cyrus's dad, um, the Billy Ray Cyrus, uh, is, he's, he's like very nice. Like, oh, you know, he's probably upset. Right, like he's she is surprisingly angry when you think Adam should be the one that's angry, and the guy she's sleeping with, Gene, is like comically nice. Um, like give him a second, Nadine, or I can't remember her name, but you know he's probably upset. Um. So he, uh, all right. So so the, um, and 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 the revenge that Adam has at this moment, um, 
is is silly. He he's he reacts in a funny way. He goes and gets pink, hot pink paint, and pours it all over her jewelry. Um, it's interesting. It's a it's a really nonviolent response that makes me like him. Um, if he had just sort of punched his wife, I you know, I, violence is that the answer really? Um, uh, he's it's a it's like revenge, but it's the kind of revenge that causes no bodily harm. He just he attacks objects instead of people. There's something almost sweet about it. Um, but one thing that the effect that that has is Adam Kesher wears a black suit, black shirt, and now it's splattered with hot pink paint. And he will have that hot pink paint on his black suit for the rest of the movie. It is an extremely dynamic uh, and interesting kind of look. Um, it's it's cool. It's just a cool bit of costuming that's very unusual. It's really striking um, as kind of like an image from from the movie. Um, okay, cool. Oh, the other really corny thing that Naomi Watts does is she hides the money in a hat box. That's that big cylindrical box that she puts in the top shelf, um, and she and she shakes hands with Rita like, "Let's agree to you know we, that's our it's our little secret that only we know." It's really goofy, but also in old movies, the hat box is like the most obvious place to hide something because um, it's a box that doesn't have a lot in it. It's just a hat. Um, there's a lot of empty space in there to hide things. Um, so it's like a very goofy, like, you know, they, they, they're going up against the mafia. The mafia is going to figure out your secret hiding place with a hat box. Like, it's so dopey. Um, but she's adorable, and we like her. Um, okay, cool. Uh, all right. And then, then they go to the diner, and they see a waitress in the diner. Now, I want to point out, again, you're going to think I'm crazy. The waitress looks a little bit like Naomi Watts. Not a lot like Naomi wants, but a little. Um, when she has the Diane name tag, and 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 Laura Herring says, "Oh, I remember that name." Um, but she, it's again, it's important that the waitress looks a little like Naomi Watts because again, a lot of young women come to Hollywood. They want to be actresses, and they end up working at a diner forever. Um, it's one of the it's one of the ways it suggest it's, it's another suggestion that her path might not be as happy and sweet and wonderful and successful as she imagines it will be. It's a little little bit of darkness kind of floating in there. Um, cool. Um, there's also a really interesting moment. One of the again, David Lynch likes to do these kinds of not quite natural things, where this old woman comes and knocks on the door and says, "You know, something's wrong. Someone's in trouble." It's like this very witchy-looking woman, like she just got out of Shakespeare's Macbeth. And Lynch does something interesting. It's a very, she's very intense. It's just spooky, scary moment. And Lynch drops the background out. So Naomi Watts opens the door, and you can see Naomi Watts very clearly. And behind Naomi Watts is pitch blackness. Um, it's not realistic. Some light would get in and you'd be able to see some of the hall. If you could see Naomi Watts' face, you're going to be able to see the walls a little bit of the room she's in, right? It's just a regular doorway in a house. Come on. Um, but it really captures like a spooky sense that it's just her and this psychic old woman uh, and something's wrong. Um, and, and, and it's just pitch black behind her. And it's just a really neat kind of spooky effect. And everything in this movie is, is just surprisingly, it's just strange. Still have no idea what's going on. So I'm looking down on my notes. Um, Okay, and then Adam Kesher gets the call from the cowboy. Um, uh, he's supposed to go meet someone named the cowboy. Now, and he, and he goes, and this is this is some kind of mysterious agent for the powerful forces. Mister Rourke sent has an agent named the cowboy, which is so ridiculous. Um, cow, this, this, the cowboy is an interesting figure. Um, I often ask my students what he's wearing, and they say it's cowboy outfit. And it is, but you could be better than that. You can do, a, you can be more specific. There's all those things in your papers. I often get stuff in student papers that are like, and he's wearing a cowboy outfit. Describe it in more detail, because like everything in this movie, the cowboy is strange. It's not just strange to have a cowboy walking around in a modern day movie, but he's strange looking. Why? Well, he's wearing a cowboy outfit, but like it's very, very clean. So that it doesn't look like a cowboy outfit so much as it looks like an outfit a cowboy would wear in a musical about cowboys. It's like on purpose fake cowboy. He looks like he's in Oklahoma, the musical. Um, also, the guy who's the cowboy, he's like albino. Like he's extremely pale. He has extreme like, like like blonde eyebrows. Like a cowboy should be spending his day out in the sun and should have like cracked weathered face and a tan from but that's what he it, it's weird because he looks like not a cowboy, but a very pale actor dressed up as a cowboy and the outfit's so clean it's never he's not riding horses. He's not out doing work. He's like in a musical. So again, more disorienting stuff. And this movie, um we're so deep into it and I still don't know what's going on.